welcome to CEO.ca. My name is James Patton, and today I'm joined by John Putters, CEO of Vision State. Vision State are a technology company focused on uh, Internet of Things or IoT products, uh, and they trade on the Toronto Venture Exchange under the ticker VIS. John, it's great to have you with us today. Thank you, James. Appreciate the invite and uh, looking forward to our discussion. Yeah, great. Well, you know, without further ado, I'd love to, to maybe get some of the backstory behind Vision State. You know, can you tell us a bit more about the history of the company? Absolutely. So the company actually started out doing interactive directories. We basically disrupted that market. Uh, we introduced touch screens, basic AI, um, but it got us into the facility management sector. And through that, uh, we were doing an installation at a very prominent uh, shopping center in uh, Canada. And um, we happened to uh, mention the fact that uh, the technology associated with monitoring the cleaning and the effectiveness of their uh, maintenance programs and such uh, was lacking and they were using old technology. In other words, the a uh, very prominent piece of paper that people have seen um, in basically every restroom that you've ever gone into. Um, and of course, that didn't provide the analytics necessary in case of, uh, you know, for example, a slip and fall lawsuit. So about five to six years ago, we launched Wanda um, in that shopping center. And really what we did is uh, developed a smart restroom solution where that piece of paper was replaced with a tablet which was interacted both by consumers or customers of the location and the facility managers who recorded what they did so that they had a log of uh, um, you know what activities were done when by whom so that they could defend against uh, slip and fall injuries among other things. Uh, what happened is, of course, COVID came along and uh, there was a movement away from uh, touch-enabled screens. Uh, we also determined that uh, with our product, which we named Wanda, um, really wasn't a full management solution. So we embarked uh, during COVID on rolling out a mobile application that works with NFC and QR codes that could be deployed throughout a facility um, and, and really monitor all the cleaning and all the maintenance activities throughout a facility. So it made a major jump um, in terms of the technology and the competitiveness of it. Um, it went from a basic, uh, what, what do you call it, a smart restroom solution to a full facility management solution with things like scheduling, task assignments, auditing, and the rest of it. Um, so what ended up happening, James, was really COVID indicated or, uh, you know, certainly illustrated the, re the need to um, uh, maintain proper cleaning and maintenance protocols to keep the public safe, which made our technology extremely relevant. Um, so that, that's where we are at today. And uh, since COVID, uh, we've seen a dramatic increase in the interest of our technology and the deployments of our technology, both in Canada and globally, in fact. Yeah, it sounds like you know, COVID was really uh, you know, transformational in, in terms of uh, you know, the, the scope of the business and, and maybe a, a pivot towards that full facility management that you mentioned. Could you tell us maybe a little bit more about uh, you know, I guess both the opportunity in terms of, you know, the market that you're really seeking to, to capture and then maybe also, you know, the, the competitive landscape, you know, what, what makes your uh, product and technology, uh, you know, so competitive and, and compelling to uh, your new customers? Great question. So, um, first of all, what we did is we went out and found the perfect global partner for us to deploy this globally. And we didn't want to internalize sales. We didn't have, you know, uh, relationships with the customers and that sort of thing. Uh, so we entered into a contract with this global partner that has um, given us access to their full set of uh, salespeople across the world, in fact. And they are the leading experts in cleaning and hygiene. So... 
Um, they're advancing it. It's now part of their clean routine um, that they're selling to their customer. Um, and uh, so that's really opened the market for us substantially where we can focus on developing new technology. So what is the enticing uh, features of our technology? Really what it is, is it's about reporting and analytics. And I don't think in today's day and age, you can really make solid business decisions without access to information. This is the competitive landscape that we're seeing. And in fact, we're now um, implementing artificial intelligence as, as well. In fact, we've already done that uh, for even deeper, more meaningful analysis on the data on what's going on. So, so it's not only about um, the health and safety of the customer. It's also about the efficiency of the organization and, you know, providing those services in uh, whether it's maintenance or, or cleaning. So, you know, on top of that, you've got increasing costs associated with commodities. So toilet paper, everything has gone up um, substantially. And uh, so there's even more focus on let's make sure that we're being efficient in delivering this service in light of the fact that we have rising costs. So there's a whole bunch of factors that are coming together to make us very relevant to, uh, you know, basically any facility management company or any large facility. Yeah, it's interesting. You, you mentioned the, uh, the analytics piece as well. I think that there's definitely you know, an ever increasing appetite for, for data. And, and when you're operating on you know, a large scale, a, a busy kind of full service facility, I'm sure that even just that that small extra piece of information can uh, you know, accumulate and, and save a lot of money over uh, over time. So today, uh, you, know, you you put out some uh, some news. Can you walk us through the significance of that uh, that new update for the company? Absolutely. So um, this is a renewal of a global contract that we've had in place for the last three years, which uh, expired, and we signed a new contract. So what this means is that uh, in Canada, it will double our revenue effective immediately. Um, but it also solidifies our opportunities globally. So, so there are select territories, including uh, the UK, Australia, um, and parts of Europe that are included in that contract that will enable us not only to secure the Canadian market, but also expand globally with our partner. And they have obviously very strong presence in Europe. This is a company that trades on the London Stock Exchange, has been around literally since 1855, and is very, very strong in the European and Asian markets. So we're very excited about it. I mean, obviously it's gonna have an immediate impact on our revenue, uh, but in terms of global expansion and building the business further, it, it's significant. Um, the, the one territory that we um, left out of the agreement, in fact, is the United States. So uh, Vision State is tackling that market on its own. However, we already have a foothold in that market. Uh, and, and one of the largest ones is, uh, you know, frankly, the largest private equity real estate company in the world who have installed our technology in their head offices and New York and, and Miami and are planning on uh, deploying it even further. So, so we have a foothold, we wanna grow that market, uh, but we're really, really happy that we've wrapped up this agreement with our global partner and we're moving forward on building the company even further. So it's very exciting for us at Vision State. Yeah, fantastic. Sounds like you know, a very exciting deal. And, and I mean, obviously the immediate implications of doubling revenue are, are obviously uh, exciting, but also, you know, those uh, global opportunities and, and what that kind of unlocks in terms of uh, upside down the line really sounds like, uh, you know, it's a, a very significant uh, development in, in the company. Yeah, it sure is. And uh, you know what, um, we're really excited about tackling these new markets. We already have projects going on in those markets, including um, installing at the head office of one of the largest global ride sharing companies in the world in London, England. So, 
Um, yeah, this is very exciting, and uh, we're we're definitely going to the next level now. Just to close off, you know, is there anything uh, that you'd like to share with the CEO.ca community? You know, what should people be keeping in mind when they're looking at the vision state story? I think they should keep in mind the fact that uh, we have technology that has customers, large customers that are adopting this technology, and we're very, very innovative. We uh, definitely are at the forefront of this market. We had an early lead by being first to market five or six years ago, and we're maintaining that by implementing new technology all the time, including most recently we launched um, a time of flight people counting sensors that have never been developed before anywhere in the world. You know, this is something that's come from vision state and, and these people counting sensors are extremely important in giving context to the efficiency of delivering services and uh, resources to a particular area. So we continue to be innovative the relationship with our global partner allows us to do that because they're doing the majority of the sales and the marketing, which enables us to focus on being ahead on the technology. And uh, we're solidifying that every day. Great. Well, sounds like there's uh, lots in store and, and always exciting to hear about in-house innovation that's occurring. Uh, you know, John, thank you so much for your time today. And we'll be sure to uh, keep an eye on Vision State over the coming months. Thank you, James. Appreciate your time.